hi guys think all are good and here we are with our fourth video it's a nice and cool video and today we are going to discuss about a person related to tech he would say he's the pioneer of the person computer revolution the person Steve was Nike he's a co-creator of Macintosh iPod iPhone iPad and the first Apple stores and here in this hall, we could surely say who is this, and it's none other than Stephen Paul Jobs. Today we are going to discuss his personal life, his ways to his success, his companies, his progress, his death, his birth, and everything. And better we could start from his birth, but we could say. For his birth only, we could say about a great background. Firstly, look at his uh, biological and adaptive families. Uh, he was adopted when he was born, and there was a long story there, and we could look through it. Stephen Paul Jones, Steve Jobs, was born on February 24, 1955, to Abdul Fatah Jadali and Johnny Shipley and was adopted by Paul and Clara Jobs. His biological father, Abdul Hatpal John, Arabic, who grew up in home, Syria, and was born into an Arabic Muslim household. Paul an undergraduate at the American University of Beirut, Lebanon. He was a student activist and spent his time in prison for his political activities. He pursued a PhD at the University of Wisconsin where he met Joanna Carola Simon, a Catholic of Swiss and German descent, and David's uh, biological mother of Steve Jobs. As a doctoral candidate, Jandali was a teaching assistant for a course simply was taking. Although both were the same age, Mona Simpson, Job's biological sister, notes that her maternal parents were not happy that their daughter was dating a Muslim. Walter Isaac, Steve Job's official biographer, additionally states that Simply's father threatened to cut her off completely if he could continue the relationship. Job's adoptive parents, no, we could say adoptive father, Paul Winhall Jobs, was a Coast Guard mechanic. After leaving the Coast Guard, Paul Jobs married Clara Hagel Peony in 1946. Their attempts to start a family were halted after Clara had an ectopic pregnancy, leading them to consider adoption in 1955. And as we read, they were moving on the part of adopt adoption and they adopted uh, Steve Jobs. And when we talk uh, about more about this the birth of Steve Jobs, Skibley, uh, Steve Jobs, mega, what is the biological mother, became pregnant with Jobs in 1954 when she and Jelly spent the summer with his family in home, Syria. According to Jendali, Sibley deliberately did not involve him in the process. Without telling me, Jonah Akut and Lau left to San Francisco to have a uh, baby without anyone knowing, including me. Skibley gave birth to Jobs on February 24, 1955 in San Francisco and chose an adoptive couple for him that was Catholic, well-educated and wealthy. But the couple later changed their mind. Jobs was then placed with Paul and Clara Jobs, neither of whom had a college education and simply refused to sign the adoption papers. She then took the matter to the court in an attempt to have her baby placed with a different family and only consented to releasing the baby to Paul and Kara after couple pledged to pay the boys' college fees. 
and we could say the his mother was going to the courts and all and that shows her love towards his her baby and all and steve also loved her a lot she because he said that uh jaw paul and clara were her thousand percent parents and these are uh, all biological mother and father were just something this something for he said his comment was like this with regard to his biological parents job offered them a sperm and egg tank that's not harsh it's just a way it was a sperm and nothing nothing more and this also shows his love towards his parents paul and clara and when we move into his childhood paul and clara adopted her job's sister Patricia in 1957 and by 1959 the family moved to Montana Loba neighborhood in Mountain View California it was during this time Paul built a work bench in his garage for his son in order to pass along his love for mechanics and what we could see here that Steve Jobs had a love to electronics mechanics from his early life Jobs meanwhile admired his father's craftsmanship because he knew how to build anything. If he needed a cabinet, he would build it. When the bills are hands, he gave me a hammer so I could work with it. I wasn't that into fixing cars, but I was eager to hang out with my dad. This was a statement made by Steve Jobs. Really good, it conveys a lot. By the time he was 10, Jobs was deeply involved in electronics and befriended many of the engineers who lived in the neighborhood. He had difficulty making friends with the children of his own age. However, he was seen by his classmates as a loner. And as we know, as we just said now, uh, Jobs involved in electronics and befriended many engineers. who lived in his neighborhood and that conveys his hunger for learning more and more and that's a very big thing that everyone doesn't have jobs had difficulty functioning in the traditional classroom he tended to resist other figures frequently misbehaved and was suspended a few times clara had taught him to read as a toddler and jobs stated that He was pretty bored in school and had turned into a little turtle. You should have seen as in the third day we basically destroyed the teachers. He frequently played pranks on others at Mondaloma Elementary School in Mountain View. His father Paul, who was abused as a child, never reprimanded him. However, and instead The school was not challenging. He blamed the school for not challenging his brilliant son. And here we could see that it was the blind love of his father to Mr. Jobs. As Jobs was a boy, Jobs would later credit his fourth grade teacher, Imogen Teddy Hill, with turning him around. She taught an advanced fourth grade class. and it took her about a month to get him to my situation she bribed me in the learning she would say i really want to finish this this work but i will give you 5 bucks if you finish it and we could see here the way how his teacher was motivating him motivating him to learn more and more and making him come out of that loneliness and this skill is lacking in most of the teachers at present and it's very rare and to get a teacher like that is heaven to be safe it's very very lucky only two three people in hundreds get it and we could say that really kindled a passion in jobs for learning things he said i learned more that year and i think i learned in other years in school they are wanted me to skip the next two years in grade school and go straight to junior high school and learn a full language but my parents were very wasly won't let it happen 
Tab skip the fifth grade and transfer to sixth grade at Christian Middle School in Modern B, where he became a socially awake loner. Tops was often bullied at Sutherland Middle, and in the middle of seventh grade, he gave his spell an ultimatum, a strong decision taken by him. They had to either take him out of Christian or drop or he would drop out of school. Though Job's family was not well off, they used all these savings in 1967 to buy a new home, allowing Jobs to change schools, the new house in, and now we can move to Job's high school life. The location of the Love's Atlas home meant that Jobs would be able to attend nearby Homestead High School which had strong ties to Silicon Valley. He began his first year there in late 1968 along with Bill Fernandez. Fernandez introduced Jobs to Steve Wozniak and would later be Apple's first employee. Either Jobs, not Fred uh, Fernandez, whose father was a lawyer, came from engineering households and just decided to enroll in John M.C. Column's Electronics 1. M.C. Column and the rebellious Jobs, who had grown his hair long and become involved in growing counter lecture, could even clash and Jobs began to lose interest in the class. And you could say that his success was not just came up in one day just like that. He had been working for it. He was been struggling for it. He underwent a change during mid-1970. He told, I got stoned for the first time I discovered Shakespeare, Daniel Thomas and all that classic stuff. I read Moby Dick and went back as a junior talking creative writing classes. Job also later noted to his official biographer that I started to listen to music a lot for lots and I started to read more outside of just science and technology. Shakespeare Flat 2. I loved King Lear when I was senior I was a senior and I had his phenomenal AP English class. The teacher was this guy who looked like Ernest Hemingway. He took a bunch of us snow showing in Yosemite. During his last two years at Homestead Heights, Jobs developed two different industries, electronics and literature. And here is a place where or a turning point is my fear. He also had a interest in literature with electronics. These dual interests were particularly reflected during Job's senior year his best friends were Ross Miak and his first his first girlfriend, the artistic Homestead Junior, Christian Werner. In nineteen seventy one after Warsak began attending University of California, Berkeley Jobs would visit him there a few times a week. This experience has led him to study in nearby Stanford University Student Union. Jobs also decided that rather than join the electronics club, he would put to a live shows with friend for Homestead having a great jazz program. He was described by Homestead classmate as a kind of brain and kind of hippie, but he never fit into any crew. He was smart enough to be a nerd, but wasn't nerdy, and he was too intellectual for the hippies. He just wanted to get wasted all the time, wasted all the time. He was a kind of outsider. In high school, everything revolved around what group you were in. And if you weren't careful in different group, you weren't any part. He was an individual in a world where individuality was a 
by senior late in 1971. He was taught in freshman English class at Stanford and working on Homestead Underground with film project with Chris and Bernard. And we could say, as his high school life was not so bright, that he was not that interested to his mates. Around that time, Wozniak designed a low post digital blue fox to generate the necessary tons to manipulate the telephone network, allowing free long distance calls. John Jobs decided then to sell them and split the profit with Wozniak. And the gladness in sales of his illegal blue boxes went well and perhaps planted the seed in Jobs' mind that electronics could bring both fun and profitable. Jobs, in a 1991 interview, recalled that it took six months for him and for Zach to figure out how to build the blue boxes. Jobs, after later, reflected that. Had it not been for voicing blue voices, there would have been and have, there wouldn't have been an apple. He says it showed them that they could take on large companies and people. And what we see here is that his friend was a was a great person who came into his life, who changed his life in a way. That he said thoroughly that if the blue boxes was not discovered by YC, Today's Apple, the Apple computer companies will no longer be there, and that's really great. What we understand from is that big things come from small things. What we should do is find and work for it. By senior year of high school, Jobs began using an CD, that's a hallucinogenic drug, which later recalled that on one occasion he consumed it in a wheat field outside Sunnyvale and experienced the most wonderful feeling of my life up to that point. In mid-1972, after graduation, before leaving to Reed College, Jobs and Bernard rented a home from their other romantic aunt. And he took uh, some drugs, as we said before, and that was all his mid-school uh, mid activities, or mid-school, high school activities, sorry. And it's going like this song. And now we move on to the detail for the part of the primary Apple companies. In February 1974, Jobs returned to his parents' home in Los Altos and began looking for a job. He was soon hired by a tower in, in Los Gatos, California, which gave him a job as a technician. I would say this was one of his first jobs, just as uh, like a, I said, related to electronics at all. Back in 1973, Steve Wozniak designed his own version of classic video game home and gave both gave the board to tips. According to Wozniak, Achari only hired jobs because it took board down the company and they thought that he had to build it himself. There is co-founder Nolan Bushnell later described him as difficult but valuable, pointing out that he was very often the smartest guy in the room and he would let people know that. And you could say these were all really wonderful things at the primary stages of Apple, this design. During this period, Jobs and Bernie, we might involve with each other, will continue to see other people. By early 1974, Jobs was living at Bernay, living what Bernie describes as a simple life in Los Galtos' cabin, working at Atari and saving money for his inventory trip to India. Say here is that he had a great love to India. Jobs traveled to India in mid 1974 to visit Neem Karali Namba at Kanichi Ashram with three friend and eventually Apple employee Daniel Cutlake in such a spiritual entanglement. When they got to the Neem Karali Ashram, 
it was almost deserted because Nicaragua has died in 1973. Then they made the long trek up a dry riverbed to an ashrama of Haida Khan Babaji. After seven months, Job left India and returned to the US ahead of Daniel Conflict Tech. Jobs had changed his appearance, his head was shaved, and he wore traditional Indian clothing during clothing. During this time, Jobs experienced with sympathetic cells. Later calling his elastic experiences, one of the two of the three most things he had turned in his life. And what we can say about Philip Pinanders is that it's a subcategory of physiotropics which include all physiocratic substances. Our halogenic class of physio drug whose primary action is triggered to experience via retroagresis, causing special psychological resources and like that. And that was about that drug. And when we come back to Mr. Jobs' apple life, he spent a period at Old One Farm, a commune in Oregon that was owned by Robert Friedland, who joined him there for a period. During this time, Jobs and Brother both became practitioners of Zen Buddhism through the Zen master Kabon Chino Otakabo. So I was living in his parents' backyard, tall shoot, which had converted into a bedroom. Jobs initial lengthy meditation retreats at Tasarajara Saint Mountain Center, the oldest Soto Sen monastery in the US. He considered taking up monastic residence at the origin in Japan and maintained a long life appreciation for Sen. In mid-1975, after returning to Atari, Jobs was assigned to create a circuit board for the arcade video game breakout. According to Bushnell, Atari offered US dollars 100 for each DTL chip that was eliminated in the mission. Jobs had little specialized knowledge of circuit board design and made a deal with Bosnia to split evenly between them if Vosia could minimize the number of chips. Much amazement of Atari engineers was Shaq reduced the detail count to 46 and designed it so tight that it was impossible to reproduce on an assembly line. According to Vosnia, Jobs told him that Atari gave them only $700 instead of 5000 paid out and that was had share was just three fifty dollars. Was I did not learn about the actual bonus until ten years later. But he said that if Jobs had told him about it and explained that he needed money, Wasa would have given it to him. Jobs and Wasniak attended meetings of Bomber Computer Club in 1975 which are stepping stone to the employment and development and marketing of his first Apple computer. And when we look at Wozniak, he was always a good friend of Jobs. And it's very rare to get a friend like Wozniak, who was indeed a very calm and entertaining person, who never had a lot of motivation, but he had a lot of motivation, see? And Job was really helpful. He was really very helpful for Jobs in his career as well as personal life. And that all had contributed to his success. You can't just say it was like that. And now we move on to Apple in the US 1976 to 1985. By March 1976, Bosnia completed the basic design of Apple One computer. I showed it to Jobs, who suggested that they sell it. Wozniak was at first skeptical of the idea, but later agreed. In April of the same year, Jobs and Wozniak and administrative or Sarah went for the Apple computer company, now called Apple Inc. 
as business partners in Jobs' parents' Crisp Day Farm on April 1, 1967. The operation originally started in Jobs' bedroom and led him to garage, when he stayed only a short time, leaving Jobs and was near as the active private co founders of the company. The two decided on the name Apple after Jobs returned from the all one song commune to Oregon and told was Nick about his time spent in farm at the arcade. Jobs' original plant produced spread printed circuit boards of the Apple One and sell them in computer hobbies for $50 each. To raise the money they needed to build the first batch of circuit boards, Bosek sold his HP scientific calculator and Jobs sold his Volkswagen van later that year. Computer retailer Paul Cheryl purchased 50 fully assembled units of Apple One from them for $500 each. When he bought about 200 Apple One computers were produced in total. And as he said, these people, he started in the operation in his bedroom and moved to a garage. And what we understand from this is that when things start from scroll, as I told before, and when things never come to life as that big, we should gradually grow from small to big. A neighbor on Christ Drive recalled jobs as an old individual who would greet his client with underwear hanging out and barefoot and hit the left. Another neighbor was a lad who had just earned his PhD in chemical engineering at Stanford, recalling this missing jobs budding business. You purchased cars, put them in big tech, he said about the mainframe missions of that time. Steve took me over to a garage. I had a circuit board with a chip on it and do you want TV set, a Panasonic cassette tape deck and a keyboard. He said, this is an Apple computer. I said, you have got to be talking. I dismissed the whole idea. Jobs friend from Reed College and in Reed College in India, Daniel Cote recalled that as an early Apple employee, he was the only person who worked in the garage. Boss would show up once a week with his latest code. Steve Jobs didn't get his hands dirty in that sense. Kodlik was also stated that much of the early work took place in Jobs' kitchen, where he spent hours on the phone trying to investors for the company. And this over the early life of Apple, and you could see how far this and the today's Apple company stand. And Nothing we can say from this is life, and life turns into a different thing in the future. And they received funding from the 10, 10 in semi retired Intel product marketing manager and energy engineer Mike Marco, as called MC Neil, one of the co founders of Sun Microsystems, said that jobs broke a class in selling. In Silicon Valley, because he did create a very successful company at a young age. Michael brought Apple to attention of Arthur Rowe, which, after looking after Carl Apple, booth at the Homebrew Computer Show, started with 60,000 American dollars investment and went on the Apple board. Jobs was not pleased when Michael recruited my Scott from National Semiconductor in February 1977 to serve as the first president and CEO of Apple. After Berlin returned from her own journey to India, she and Charles fell in love again as Brain and Nan noted changes in him that she attributes to Combo, who she was also still following. It was also at this time that Jobs displayed a prototype Apple One computer for Bernan and his parents in their living room. Bernan notes a shift in this time period that the two main influences on Jobs were Apple Inc. and Combo. 
by early 1970s, she said, and so she and Jobs would spend spare time together at her home at Duven Ranch Ranch in Los Angeles, which served as a hotel and environment education center. In April 1970, Jobs and Walsh introduced the Apple II at the West Coast Computer Ferry. It is the first consumer product to have been sold by the Apple Computer. Primarily designed by Walsh Jobs oversaw the development of the solution case and road called developed the unique power of supply. During the design change, Jobs argued that Apple II had two expansion slots while Wasek wanted eight. After a heated argument, Wasek threatened that Jobs should go get himself another computer. They later decided to go with eight slots. The Apple II came one of the first highly successful mass produced microcomputer products in the world. And we can say that uh, there were some problems in their friendship, but they were not ready to break it. They were continuing it in a charming way. Jobs usually went to work wearing a black long sleeve mock turtle neck made by IC McBake. It was sometimes reported as ST Cross brand leaving behind one loose jeans and no balance other than sneakers. He said his toys was inspired that start Jeremy, a not an upper mathematician professor at Brown University. Jobs told his biographer Walter Isaac he came to like the idea of having a uniform for himself, but because of his daily convenience, he rationally he claimed and his eligibility to claim signature style. And we come to his wearing the style set out. As Jobs became more successful with his new company, his relationship with Bernard grew more complex. In other understand the success of Apple was now a part of their relationship. And Berman, Dan, Dickard, and Jobs moved to a house near Apple's office in Cupertino. Berman eventually took a position in the shipping department at Apple. Berman's relationship with Jobs deteriorated as his position with Apple grew, and she began to consider ending the relationship. In October 1977, Berman was approached by Rod Plot, who asked her to take a paid apprentice ship design blueprints for the apples. Both Holt and Charles believed that it would be a good decision for her given her artistic abilities. Holt was particularly eager that she take the position and puzzled by her abilities toward it. Person's decisions preferred was overshadowed by the fact that she realized she was pregnant and Job was the foe. It took her a few days to tell Jobs whose face according to Burmans turned ugly at the news. The same time according to Bernard, at the beginning of her third trimester, Jobs said to her, I never wanted to ask that you get an abortion. I just didn't want to do that. He refused all the discussions of his home. Bernard turned down the internship and decided to leave Apple. She said to her that Jobs told her, if you give up this baby for adoption, you will be sorry, and I am never going to help you. According to Bernard, Jobs started to see people with notation that I slept around and she was in for her, which meant that that this could not be his child. A few weeks before she was to give birth, Bernard was invited to deliver her baby at all one farm. She accepted the offer. When Jobs was 33, the same age as his biological parents when they had him, Bernard gave birth to her baby, Lisa Bernani, on May 17, 1978. Jobs went there for the birth after he was cornered at Robert Fairley, their mutual friend and the farm owner. While distant, Jobs worked with her on a name for the baby, which they discussed while sitting in the fields on a planet. Bernard cited as a name Lisa. 
with jobs of the like and notes that Job was very attached with the name Lisa. While he was so publicly denied paternity, she would discover later that during this time, Job was preparing to unveil a new kind of computer that he wanted to give a female name. His first choice was Clary, after S.G. Clary, and also stated that she never gave him permission to use Clary's name for a computer, and he had the plans for her. Job also worked with his team to come up with a face, local integrated software architecture, as an alternative explanation for the Apple Lisa. Bigger Lester, however, Jobs admitted to his biographer Walter Isaacson that obviously it was named for my doctor. And this is all on his personal life. And what we understand from this is that from his seek around him, what was happening around him, and he was thinking more into it and getting more ideas about it. When Jobs denied by Trinity, a DNA test established him and Lisa's father. He required him to give Bernard uh, a DNA test when he was Lisa's father, and it was all true. It required him to give Bernard uh, $385 a month in addition to returning the welfare money she had received. Jobs gave her $500 a month at a time when Apple went public and Jobs became a millionaire. And you can share this was a real 10 by one of life's lives. After Bernard agreed to give an interview with Michael Motris for Time Magazine for his Time Person of the Year special released on January 3, and the three in which she discovered her relationship with Jobs. Rather than name Jobs the person of the year, the magazine named the computer the machine of the year. In the issue, Jobs questioned the reliability of the paternity test. He stated that the probability of parity for Jobs statement standard on what one person is. Jobs responded by arguing that 28% of the population of the United States could be followed. Time also noted that the baby girl and the mission on which Apple was placed so much hope for the future shared the same name, Lisa. Job was worth over $1 million in 1978 when he was just 23 years old. His net worth grew over $250 million by the time he was 25, according to estimates. He was also one of the youngest people ever made Forbes list of nation's richest people and one of the only handful to have done it themselves without inherited wealth. And in 1982, Jobs bought an apartment in two floors of San Remo and Manhattan building with politically progressive reputation. Although he never lived there, he spent years renovating it with help of IMP. In 2003, he sold it to U2 singer Bono. In 1983, Jobs lured John Scully away from Pepsi Cola to serve as Apple CEO as king. Do you want to spend the rest of your life? selling sugar water or do you want to change to change the world? In 1984, Jobs bought the Jacqueline House and estate and resorted there for a decade after that he leased it out for several years and in 2000 when he stopped maintaining his house allowing his exposure to the weather to degrade it. In 2004, Jobs received permission uh, from the town of would decide to demolish the house in order to build a smaller, kind of style one. After a few years in court, the house was finally demolished in 2011, a few months before he died. Jobs began directly development of matching toes in 1981, when he took over the project from early Apple employee Jeff Raskin. Who convinced the computer was sick was on leaving during his time due to an airplane crash with that year. On January 22, 1984, Apple aired a Super Bowl television commercial 
titled 1984, which ended with the words on January 24th, African Renaissance will introduce Matt Chintosh, and you will see why 1984 won't be like 1984. Really great. On hit to hear and see. On January 24, 1984, an emotional jobs introduced the matching toes to a wildly enthusiastic audience at Apple's annual shareholders meeting held in Flint Auditorium. Matching toes engineer Andy Fred Tesfell described the scene as pandemonium. The matching dust was based on the Lisa and Xerox Park PSRC's most driven graphic user interface. And it was widely claimed by the media with strong vision sales supporting it. However, the slow processing and speed and limited range of Halo software led to rapid sales decline in the second half of 1984. Scully's and Jobs Perspective visions for the company greatly deferred the former favored offer on potential computer like the Apple II, sold to education, small businesses, and home market values less vulnerable to IBM. Jobs wanted the company to focus on closed architecture, matching doors as business alternatives of IMC PC. President and CEO Scully and little control over chairman of the board, Charles McIntosh Division, and it's an Apple II division operator like separate companies, duplicating services. Although it's priced for 85% of Apple sales in the early 1985, the company's January 85 annual meeting did not mention Apple II division or was Main left including Worsak, many left including Worsak, who stated that the company had been going to the wrong direction for the last five years and sold most of its stock. Despite being frustrated with the companies, including Jobs himself, dismissal of Apple II, and was in favor of Macintosh, Worsak left amicably and remained an honorary employee of Apple. Pending the friendship with Jobs until his death. By early 1985, Macintosh's failure to defeat IBM C became clear and strengthened Scully's position in company. In May 1985, Scully and Fish by Arthur Rock decided to recognize Apple and proposed a plan to the board that would remove Jobs from the Macintosh crew and put him in charge of new product development. This move would effectively render Jobs powerless within Apple. In response, Jobs then developed a plan to get rid of Scully and take over Apple. However, Jobs was confronted after a plan was leaked. He said that he would leave Apple. The board declined his resignation and asked him to reconsider. Scully also told Jobs that he had all votes needed to go ahead with reorganization. A few months later, September 17, 1985, Jobs submitted a letter of resignation to Apple Ford. Five additional senior Apple employees also resigned and joined Jobs in new venture. Next, any exchange. The matching the struggle continued after Jobs left Apple, so marketed and received in Frankfurt. The expensive Macintosh had sell in 1935, Bill Gates, then, Bill Gates, then developing company Microsoft, threatened to stop developing Mac application unless it was guaranteed a license for Mac operating system software. Microsoft was developing its graphical user interface for DOS, which was calling Windows, I didn't want Apple to sue of the similarities between Windows, GUI, and Mac interface. Scully granted Microsoft the license, which later led to problems for Apple. In addition, cheap IBM CPC clones that run on Microsoft software and had graphical user interface to begin appeal. Although the machines preceded the clones, it was more expensive. 
So the relay tire is the windows you send the face, was getting better and better as well as us taking invisible more shares from Apple. Windows based IBM CPC clones also let graphical user interface was beginning to be taken for granted. Undermining the most apparent advantage of the Mac, it seemed clear as nanotechnologies would doubt that Apple couldn't go with error indefinitely against the whole IBM core market. And this shows that uh, he had a lot of problems, a lot of personal problems as well as a lot of pressure from the work side. But he never loses hope and care to work. And that made him to the image of the next company. And now we can move on to the years 1995 to 1997. The time of Nest Computers and EXT. Following his registration from resignation from Apple in 1985, Jobs founded NXT Nest Inc. with $7 million. A year later, he was running out of money when he sought venture capital with no product on the horizon. Eventually, Jobs attracted to the attention of billionaire Ross Petrot, who invested heavily in the company. The next computer was shown to have worked in what concerned Jobs' comeback event, a lavish investigation of the cover loans event that was described as a multimedia extra The celebration was held at the Louis M. Davis Symphony Hall, San Francisco, California on Wednesday, October 12, 1988. Steve Wozniak said in a 2013 interview that while Joe was at X, he was really getting his head together. The next few workstations were first released in 1990, priced at US dollars $9,999. Like Apple Lisa, the next workstation was technologically advanced and designed for the education sector, but was largely dismissed at cost for heat for educational security. The NEXT, I could say the next workstation, was known for its technical. Strength chief among them is objective oriented software development system. Jobs marking the next price to the financially and scientific and academic community, community highlighting its innovative experimental new technologies such as Mac scale mode, the digital signal processor chip, and the build it in a third Ethernet port. Making use of Nest Computer, English computer scientist Tim Berners-Lee invented the World Wide Web in 1990 at CERN -E in Switzerland. The revised second generation Next Cube was released in 1990. Jobs tutored it as the first interpersonal computer that would replace the personal computer. With its innovative Nest Mail multimedia email system, Nest Cube would share voice, image, and graphics and video in mail for the first time. In the personal computing is going to revolutionize human communication and group work. Jobs told the reports. Jobs ran next with an obsession for hashtag perfection. As evident by development of the attention of Nest to magnesium keys, it put considerable screen on Nest hardware division and in 1993 having sold over 50,000 missions. Nest transitioned fully to the software development with release of Nest Step Indel. The company reported the first year profit uh, $1.03 million in 1994. In 1996, Nest Cameras of Bank released Web Objects, a framework for web application development. After Nest was acquired by Apple Inc. in 1997, Web Objects was used to build and run the Apple Store, Mobile Me Services, and the iTunes Store. And we can see this was all great turning points in this life and the invention of Nest. Computers that a great 
profit and of the 1986 jobs funded the spin out of the graphics group later named Pixel from Lucas Film Capital Graphics Division for the price of 10 million, 5 million of which it was given to the company as capital and 5 million of which was paid to Lucas Film for technology rights. The first film produced by Pixar with Disney partnership, Toy Story 1995, with Jobs Clayton as executive producer, both fame and critical acclaim to the studio when it was released. Over the next 15 years, under Pixar's creative chief, John Lasseter, the company produced box office hits, a bug life for an 88, Toy Story 2 1999, Worcester Singh 2001, Finding Nemo 2003, The Incredibles 2004, Cars 2006, Ratawoli 2006, War E 2008, Up 2009, and Toy Story 3 2010. Finding Nemo, The Incredibles, Ratawoli Up, and The Toy Story 3 each received the Academy Award for the Best Animated, animated Feature and Award introduced in 2001. In 2003 and 2004, as Pixar's Cora with Disney was running out, Jobs and Disney Chief Executive Michael S. Esther tried but failed to negotiate their new partnership. And in January 2004, Jobs announced that he would never deal with Disney again. Pixar could speak new partner to distribute these films after its contact expired. In October 2005, Paul Eagle replaced his score at Disney, and Eagle quickly worked as a main relationship with Jobs and Pixar. On January 24, 2006, Jobs and Eagle announced that Disney has agreed to purchase Pixar in all stock transactions worth $7.4 billion American dollars. When the deal closed, Jobs again the Walt Disney Company's largest single shareholder with approximately 7% of the company's stock. Jobs' holdings in Disney far exceeded those of East New York, who holds 1% person, and Disney family member Roy E. Disney, who until his 2009 death held for 1% of the company's stock, whose criticism of this has established that he sought this relationship with Pixar as will later is just out of stream. Upon completion of the merger, Jobs received 7% of Disney shares and joined the board of directors as the largest individual shareholder. Upon Jobs' death, his shares in Disney were transferred to Stephen P. Jobs Trust, led by Lauren Jobs. After the Jobs' death, Ego recalled in 2019 that many warned him about Jobs, that he would bully me everyone else, Eager wrote, who didn't want Steve Jobs had to influence over how a company is run. And as an active Disney board member, he rarely created trouble for me, not ever but rarely. He speculated that they would have seriously concerned most of Disney and have hope had Jobs lived. Claudia Norman of Pixar described Jobs as a mature, mellow individual who never interfered with the creative process of the filmmakers. In early June 2014, Pixar co-founder and Walt Disney Animation Studios president E.T. Cottonwell revealed that Jobs once addressed him with just explain each of them until they understand in the seconds. Cartman released the book Creativity Inc. in 2014, which recounts numerous experiences of working with Jobs. Regarding his own manner of dealing with Jobs, Cartman writes, In all the two six years with Steve, Steve and I never had one loud verbal argument. It's not my nature to do that. We will describe fairly frequently about things. I would say something to him and he would immediately shoot it down because he could think faster than I could. I would then wait a week, I'd call him up and I'd give my counter agreement to what he said and he'd immediately shoot it down. So when I did wait another week and sometimes he went for months. 
But the end on three things happened. It was third of the time he said, Oh, I get it, you are right. And that was the end of it. And it was another third of time in which I would say, Actually, I think he's right. The other third of the time where he didn't reach consensus, he just let me do the way he never said more about it. And this shows Jobs' calm and charming attitude towards failures and success. He accepted failures and success in the same way, but he was not trying to get failures. He was uh, running. Well, we can say running. He was trying for success, but failures never took him. And when we talk about Jobs' family, Chris and Berman knows that after Jobs was forced out of Apple, he apologized many times or for his behavior towards her and Lisa. She also states that Jobs said that he never took responsibility when he should have, and that was sorry. That was sorry. But this time Job had developed a strong relationship with Lisa and when she was nine. Jobs had her name on her birth certificate chain from Lisa Bernard to Lisa Bernard Jobs. In addition, Jobs and Bernard developed a working relationship to co-parent Lisa, a change Bernard carries to influence of newly found by sister Mona Simpson, who worked to repair the relationship with Lisa and Jobs. Jobs found Mona after first finding his birth mother. Jonah Sibley Simpson, shortly however, after he left at birth. Jobs did not contact his birth family during his adoptive mother Clara's lifetime, however. He would later tell his official biographer Walter Isaacson, I never wanted Paul and Clara to feel like I didn't consider them my parents because they were totally my parents. I loved them so much that I never wanted to know them I, of myself and I knew and even I had reporters to keep it quiet when I, any of them found out. However, in 1986, when he was 31, Clara was diagnosed with lung cancer. He began to spend a great deal of time with her and learn more details about his background and his adoption. Adoption, you can say, information that motivated him to find the best family. Job found on his birth certificate the name of the San Francisco doctor to whom Skipley had turned when he was pregnant. Although the doctor did not have jobs while he was still alive, he left a letter for jobs to be offered upon his death. As he died soon after, Jobs was given the letter which stated that. His mother had been unmarried graduate student from Wisconsin named Johnny 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 Skipley. Jobs only contacted Skipley after Clara died in early 1986 and after he received permission from his father Paul. In addition, after the respect of Paul, he asked the media not to report on his search. Jobs stated that he was motivated to find his brother birth mother out of Paul's curiosity and needed to search if she was okay at ta to thank her because I'm glad I didn't end up as an abortion. She was 23 and she went through a lot to have me. Sylvie was emotional during the first meeting though she was not clearly with history of Apple and job stole it and told him that he had been persuaded into seeing signing that after papers, she said that she regretted giving him up and repeatedly apologized to him for it. Jobs and Skibley would develop a friendly relationship throughout the rest of his life and would spend Christmas together. And as he asked the media to keep it all secret, that shows his real love towards his parents. He was not the blood son of uh, Jobs, but we could say they were not the blood parents of Jobs. Then also Jobs loved them a lot and says that blood doesn't matter. The thing that matters is that 
what we think in the deep of our heart what our heart says that's right and to hear what is red blood and all and that's all it's personal life and during the first visit Spibli told Jobs that he had a sister Mona who was not aware that she had a brother Spibli then arranged for them to meet in New York where Mona worked the first impression of Jobs was that she was totally straightforward and lovely just a normal and sweet guy Simpson and Jobs then went for a long walk to get to know each other Jobs later told his wife that Mona was not completely thrilled at the first to have him in her life and have my, her mother so emotional and affectionate towards me as we got to know each other we became really good friends and she is my family I don't know what I do with without her I didn't imagine a better sister my adopted sister Patty and I were never close and that was also his personal life and it said not say nothing more about it Jobs then learned his family history 6 months after he was given up for adoption Sibley's father died she wed Jandali and then had a daughter Mona Jandali states that after finishing his PhD returned to Syria to work and then was thrown in the pit of Sydney left him. They divorced in 1962. He also states that after the divorce he lost contact with Mona for a period of time. A few years later, Skibling married an ice skating teacher, George Simpson. Mona Chandali took her stepfather's last name and thus became Mona Simpson. In 1970, after divorcing her second husband, Sibley took Mona to Los Angeles and raised her on her own. When Simpson found that their father, Abu Latha Jandali, was living in Scarborough, Scarmento, California, Jobs had no interest in meeting him as he believed Jandali didn't treat his children well. Simpson went to Scarmento alone and met Jandali who worked in a small restaurant. Sandali and Simpson spoke for several hours at which point he told her that he had left teaching for the restaurant business. He also said that he and Simpson had given her another child away for an abortion, but Dad will never see that baby again, that baby is gone. At the request of Jobs, Simpson did not tell Sandali that he had met his son. Sandali further told Simpson that He once managed to make training a story near Santos and that was all success technology people used to come there and he was two jobs. Oh yeah, he used to come in and he was a guy who was a big teacher. And we could say here is that uh, Job's father saw him without saying him that he was his dad at that home. And that becomes so it was an emotional feeling of his dad. After hearing about the visit, Jobs recalled that it was amazing. I had been to the restaurant a few times and I remember meeting the owner. He was Syrian, bloody. We shook hands. However, Jobs still did not want to meet generally because I was a wealthy man by then and didn't trust him to not try to blackmail me or go with press about it. I asked Mona not to tell him about me. and Dowley later discovered his relationship to Jobs through his online blog. He then contacted Simpson and asked what is the thing about Steve Jobs. Simpson told him that it was true and later commented, My father is thoughtful and a beautiful storyteller but is very very passive. He never called him Steve. Because Simpson herself researched her Syrian roots and began to meet members of the family. She assumed that Jobs would eventually want to meet their father, but never did. Jobs also never showed an interest in Syrian heritage or the Middle East. Simpson fictionalized the search of the father in the 1990s novel, The Lost Father. Malak generally is their cousin. In 19...
1889, George first met his future wife, Lauren Paul, when he gave a lecture at Stanford Graduate School of Business, where she was a student. Soon after the event, he started that he stated that Rory was right there in front row in lecture hall and I couldn't take my eyes off her, kept losing my train of thought and stated feeling of little giddy. After the lecture, Joss met up with her, partying a lot and invited her after the dinner. From that point of her forward, they were together. Their few minor expressions for the rest of her life Paul's father died when she was very young. Her mother raised her in a middle class New Jersey home similar to the one Jobs grew up in. After she received the BA from the University of Pennsylvania, she spent a short period in high finance but found it didn't interest her. So she decided to pursue her MBA at Stanford instead in addition to other jobs, she was athletic and followed professional sports. She also bought as well self-sufficiency in the relationship as he did and was more private than public person. Jobs shows in New Year days 1990 with a fistful of freshly picked wildflowers. They married on March 18, 1991 in Buddhist ceremony at Avalala Hotel in Glacier National Park. Fifty people, including his father Paul and his sister Mona, attended. The ceremony was conducted by Jobs Guru Gobind Chino Otava. The vegan wedding cake was in the shape of Yusena half toe, and the wedding ended with a hike during the Lord's weather and a snow, snowball flight. Jobs is reported to have said to the Mona, you see, Mona, Lauren is descended from Joy Namo, and we are descended from Joy Mo. Jobs and Powell's first child, Reed, was born on September 1991. Jobs' father, Paul, died a year and a half later on March 5. Later in 1993, Paul has two more children, Aaron, born in August 99, and Eve, born in 1990. Eight, the family lived in Palo Alto, California. The journalist who grew up locally remembered him as owing the house with sarcastic Halloween decoration in Palo Alto and remember seeing him. I was also being visited by And what we understand from this is that more than a great businessman recruiter, he was also a great fan. And during 1997 to 2011, to his death, uh, Steve Jobs returned to Apple. In 1997, Apple announced that it will buy Nest for 427 million American dollars. The deal was finalized in February 1997, bringing Jobs back to the company he had co-founded. Jobs became de facto chief. After then, CEO of Gil Amelioff was ousted in July 1997. He was formally named interim chief security in September. In March 1998, in concentrate Apple efforts on returning to Prohibition, Jobs terminated a number of projects such as Newton Cyborg and Open Dock. In the coming months, many employees develop a fear of encountering jobs while riding in the elevator, afraid that they might also have a job when the doors opened. The reality was that job summary excursions were rare, but a handful of victims was in a terrorize a Google company. Jobs changed the licensing program of Macintosh clones, making it too costly for the manufacturers to continue making missions. And with the purchase of Nest, much of the company's technology found its way into Apple's products, mostly notably Nest 10, which evolved into Mac OS 10. Under Jobs, 
guidance, the company increased sales significantly with the introduction of iMac and other new products since then. Appealing designs and powerful branding have worked new products since then. Appealing designs and powerful branding have worked well for Apple. At 2000 Mac World Expo, Job officially dropped the interim modifier from starting and Apple became permanent CEO. Jobs quit at the time that he would use the title ICEO. And we could say that at this time, Jobs came back into a position which he had been before as a minor and now he's in the major level. The company subsequently branched out, introducing and improving upon other digital appliances. The company introduction of the iPod Portable Music Player, iTunes, digital music software on the iTunes software. The company made four worries in the consumer electronics and music distribution. On June 29, 2007, the Apple entered cellular phones business with introduction of the iPhone. A multi-touch display cell phone, which also induced the features of an iPod and with its own mobile browser, revolutionized the mobile browsing scene. While nurturing open ended innovation, Job also remained the employee that real artist Jobs had a public war of words with Dell Computer CEO Michael Dell starting in 1987. When Jobs first criticized Dell for making uninnovative biggie boxes. On October 6, 1997, at a Carter Symposium, season, when Dell was asked what he could do if he ran the then troubled Apple computer company, he said, I'll shut it down and give the money back to the shareholders. Then in 2006, Jobs sent an email to all employees. When Apple's market capitalization rose about 10 team, it turned out that Michael Dell was perfect at proceeding predicting the future. Based on a today's stock market close, Apple is the world more than 10. Stocks go up and down, and things may be different tomorrow, but I thought it was worth a moment of reflection to its team. And this we could say was a really great revenge. Uh, this is a way we should take revenge with them. We should challenge them and make a perfection that the thing they challenged. And that's really great. Jobs was both admired and criticized for his cosmic skill at persuasion and salesmanship, which has been dubbed with reality distortion feel and was particularly evident during his keynote speeches, colloquially known as Steve Notes. At Macworld Expos and at the Apple Worldwide Developers Conferences. Jobs was a board member at Gap Inc. from 1999 to 2002. In 2001, Jobs was granted stock options in the amount of 7.5 million shares of Apple with an excise price of $18.30, which was alleged that the option has been backdated and the excise price should have been. $21.10. It was further alleged that Jobs had already thereby incurred taxable income of 20 crore dollars uh, that he did not report and that Apple overstated its earnings by that same amount. As a result, Jobs potentially faced a number of criminal charges and civil penalties. The case was subject of active criminal and civil government investigations. Though an independent internal Apple administration company on December 29, 2006, found that Jobs was unaware of these issues and that the options granted to him were returned without being accessed in 2003. In 2005, Jobs responded to criticism of Apple's poor recycling programs for East Chain with US by lashing out, lashing out at environmental and other advocates at Apple annual meeting in Cupertino in April. In a few weeks later, Apple announced it would take back iPods for free at its retail stores. The computer take back campaign responded by flying a banner from an airplane over the Stanford University graduation at which Jobs was the 
comments Smith speaker the banner read Steve don't be a mini player recycle all the waste in 2006 he further expanded Apple recycle programs to any US customer who buy a new Mac this program includes shipping and environmental friendly disposal of your old systems the success of Apple's unique products and services provided several years of stable financial returns, propelling Apple to become the world's most valuable publicly traded company in 2011. So I was preceded as a demanding perfectionist who always aspired to position his business and their products at the forefront of information technology industry by foreseeing and setting innovation and style trends. He summed up the same concept at the end of his keynote speech at the Mac World Conference and Expo in January 2007 by quoting ice hockey player Vanny Kretzi. There is an old Vanny Kretzi quote that I love. I scare to where the park is going to be and not where it has been, and I have been tired to do that at Apple since the very very beginning and we always will cool. that's really nice on July 1 2008 a US 7 billion dollars class action suit was filed against several members of Apple board of directors for revenue loss because of alleged securities fraud in a 2011 interview with biographer Walter Isaac's son Jobs revealed that he had met with U.S. President Barack Obama, complained about the nation's shortage of software engineers, and told Obama that he was head of one team presidency, one term presidency. Jobs proposed that any foreign student who had got an engineering degree at U.S. University should automatically be offered a green card. After the meeting, Jobs commented. The president is very smart, but he kept explaining to us reason why things can't get turned. It infuriates me. And that's some that's something real to American politics, I think. And uh, nothing to we can say more about that. And in October 2003, Jobs was diagnosed with cancer. In mid-2004, he announced to his employees that he had a cancerous tumor in his pancreas. The paragonis of pancreatic cancer is usually very poor. Jobs stated that he had a rare, much less aggressive type, known as isolated cell neurotrine tumor. Despite his diagnosis, Jobs assisted his doctor's recommendation for medical intervention for nine months, instead relying on alternative medicine to treat the disease. According to Harvard researcher Ramsey Amory, his choice of alternative treatment led to an unnecessarily early death. Other doctors agree Jobs' diet was insufficient to address his disease. However, cancer researcher and alternative medicine critic David Croxy wrote that it's impossible to know whether and by how much he might have decreased his chances of surviving his cancer through his filtration with wood. My best guess was that Charles probably only modestly decreased his chances of survival if that. Barry R. Cassellet, the chief of Memorial Sloan and Catherine Cancer Centers in the Regenerative Medicine Department, said, Job's faith in alternative medicine likely cost him his life. He had only a pancreatic cancer that is treatable and curable. He is essentially committed suicide. According to Job's biographer Walter Isaacson, for nine months he refused to undergo surgery for his pancreatic cancer, a decision he later regretted as his health declined. Instead, he tried vegan diet, acupuncture, herbal remedies, and other treatment he found online, and even consulted a psychic. He was also influenced by a doctor who ran a clinic that advised juice fast 
bowel screenings and other unproven approaches. Before finally having the surgery in July 2004, he eventually underwent pancreatic detritinity or bimble procedure in July 2004 and appeared to remove the tumor successfully. Jobs did not receive chemotherapy or radiation therapy. During Jobs' absence, Tim Cook, head of worldwide sales and operations at Apple, ran the company. As January 2006, all of Jobs' wives, his doctors, and Igor and his wife knew that his cancer had returned. Jobs told Igor privately that he hoped to live to see his son for his high school graduation in 2010. In early August 2006, Jobs delivered the keynote for Apple's annual Worldwide Developers Conference. His thin, almost gaunt appearance and unusually listless delivery, together with the styles of delicate significant proportions, portions of his portions of his keynote to the other passengers, inspired a flurry of media and internet speculation about the state of his health. In contrast, according to an Ars Technia journal report, Worldwide Developers Conference WWDC attempts who saw Jobs in person said he looked fine. Following the keynote, an Apple spokesperson said that Steve Jobs' health is robust. Reversed, would say. Two years later, similar concerns followed Jobs' 2008 WWDC keynote address. Apple officials stated that Jobs was a victim of common bug and was taking antibiotics while others summarized his cactic appearances was due to bimble procedure. During a July conference call discussing Apple earnings, participants responded to repeating questions about Jobs' health by insisting that it was a private matter. Others said that shareholders had right now more Jobs given hands approach to the running company. Based on an off-the-record phone conversation with Jobs, the New York Times reported, while his health problems are made it to a good deal more than a common bug, they were in life threatening and he doesn't have a recurrence of cancer. On August 28, 2008, Bloomberg mistakenly published a 2,500-word obituary of jobs in his corporate news service containing black spaces of his age and cause of death. News carriers, customers stockpile up to date obituaries to facilitate news delivery in the even well known figure's death. Although the error was promptly rectified, many news carriers and blogs reported on it, intensifying rumors concerning Jobs' health. Jobs responded to Apple's September 8 last stroke keynote by Paris passing Mark T. Reports of my death are getting exaggerated. At subsequent media event, Jobs concluded his presentation with a slide reading 110 by 70, referring to his blood pressure, stating he would not address further questions about his health. On December 9, 16, 2008, Apple announced that marketing vice president Phil Scale would deliver the company's final keynote address at the Macworld Conference and expert is denied, again grieving questions about Jobs' health. In a statement and given on January 5, 2009 on Apple.com, Jobs said that he had been suffering from a hormone imbalance for several months. On January 14, 2009, Jobs wrote in an Apple memo that in the previous week he had learned that my health related issues are more complex than I originally thought. He announced a six month leave of absence until the end of June 2009 to allow him to better focus on his health. Tim Cook, who previously acted as CEO in Jobs' absence, to the four absence, became acting CEO of Apple, with Jobs still involved with major strategic decisions. In 2009, Tim Cook offered a portion of his liver to Jobs. Since both share a red blood type and the donor life can 
regenerate tissue such as an operation, jobs here. I will never let you do that. I will never do that. In April 2009, jobs underwent a liver transplant at Methodist University Hospital Transplant Institute in Memphis, Tennessee. Jobs for Gurness was described as S. And what we understand from this is that uh, from the last statement what I said, stated a job allowed his colleagues that when he disagreed to Tim Cook that he doesn't want this liver and he didn't want his life to be in danger, that uh, Cook's life to be in danger. And we could say that from the above statement that he had some pancreatic cancer and he didn't uh, try for treatment like the original proper way of treatment. He believed in something else and that was not that good because as we are some health issues, we should go in an approach way. We should go in a crude scientific way other than this uh, alternative medicine cycle. And uh, because as we could say that had brought him some more sufferings. And when we move on to his resignation on January 2000, no, January 17, 2011, a year and a half after job suited to work following the rival transplant. Apple announced that he had been granted a medical leave of absence. Jobs announced his leave in a letter uh, to employees stating his decision was made so he could focus on his health. As it did at the time of 2009 medical leave, Apple announced that Tim Cook would run day-to-day -day operations and Jobs would continue to involve in major strategy decisions at the company. While on leave, Jobs appeared at the iPad 2 launch event on March 2 at WWDC keynote introducing iCloud on January, June 6 and before the Copenhagen City Council on June 7. On August 24, 2011, Jobs announced his resignation as Apple CEO right into the board. I have always said if there ever came a day, when I could no longer meet my duties and expectations on Apple's CEO. I could be the first one to let you know. Absolutely, that day has come. Jobs became chairman of the board and named Tim Cook as his successor as CEO. As his successor as CEO. Jobs continued to work for Apple until the day before the death six weeks later. And this shows his love to his egg, fellow employee Tim Cook, and he and finally he resigned, and he continued his work as chairman till his but uh, till his last moment he was trying for it, and he was fighting for it, and it's going like that. And now it is time to move on to Jobs' death. Jobs died at Palo Alto, California, home around 3 p.m. PDT on October 5, 2011, due to complications from a realapase of previously treated ICEL cell pancreatic neurodynamic tumor, which resulted in respiratory arrest. He had lost consciousness the day before he died with his wife and died with his wife, children and sisters at his side. His sister Mona Simpson described his death as Steve's final words hours earlier when Mono's cyclists repeated three times. Before embarking, he looked at his sister Patty, then for a long time at his children, then at his life partner Lauren, and then over his shoulders past them. Steve's final words were, oh, 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 oh. He then lost consciousness and died several hours later. A small private parlor was held on October 7, 2011, the details of which, out of respect for Josh family, were not made public. And as it was not made public, uh, we don't know nothing more about that. Apple and Pixar each issued announcements of his death. Apple announced on the same day that they had no plans for a public service, but
but we are encouraging well wishers to send their remembrance messages to an email address created to receive such messages. Apple and Microsoft both flew their flags and half staff throughout their respective headquarters and campuses. Bob Iker ordered all Disney properties, including Walt Disney World and Disneyland, to fly their flags at half staff or from October 2006 to 12, 2011. For two weeks following his death, Apple displayed on its corporate website a symbol page that showed Jobs' knee and lifespan next to Gray Cycle Portrait. On October 19, 2011, Apple employees held a private memorial service for Jobs on the Apple campus in Cupertino. Jobs' widow Lauren was in attendance, as well as Cook, Bill Campbell, Norman Jones, Al Gore, and Paul Play. Some of the Apple's leaders chose closed briefly so employees could attend the memorial. A video game, a video of the service was uploaded in Apple's website. California Governor Jerry Brown declared Sunday, October 16, 2011, to be Steve Jobs Day. On that day, an invitation only memorial was held at Stanford University. Those in attendance included Apple and other tech company executives, members of media, celebrities, close friends of Jobs, and politicians, along with Jobs' family. Bono, Yoyo Ma, and John Abbas performed at the service, which lasted a long time and however. The service was highly secured with guards at all university gates and helicopter flight overhead from an area news station. Each attendant was given a small brown box as a farewell gift from Jobs. The box contained a copy of autobiography of Yogi by Patmosi Yoganatha. Child friend and fellow Apple co-founder Steve Bosnia, former Owner of that would become Pixar, George Lucas, former rival Microsoft co founder Bill Gates, and President Barack Obama all offered statements in response to his death. Jobs is buried in an unmarked grave at Altas Mesa Memorial Park, the only non segregation cemetery on Far Alt. And when we talk about Jobs' death, it was so sad. He never dies in our hearts. His signature in the field of science and technology will last forever. His innovations and designs, when we talk about that more, Jobs' design aesthetic was influenced by philosophies of Zen and Buddhism. In India, he experienced Buddhism while on seventh more spiritual journey, and his sense of intuition was influenced by spiritual people with whom he studied. He also learned from many references and sources such as modernist architectural style of Joseph Baker and industrial designs of Richard Sapor and Dieter Raps. According to Apple co-founder Steve Wozniak, Steve didn't ever code. He wasn't an engineer and he didn't do any art design. Diane and Kurtlake, one of Apple's earliest employees and college friend of Jobs State. Between Wozniak and Jobs, Jobs was the innovator, the inventor. Jobs was the marketing person. He listed as a the primary inventor of car inventor in 346 United States patents and patent application related to a range of technologies from actual computer and portable devices to user interfaces involving touch based speakers, keyboards, power adapters, type cases. Flaps, leaves, lanes, packages, tops, contribution, house, and spare and wear. Look to fill the product, his industrial design, chief turn at leave, had an email and jobs name of for 200 of his patents. Most of their design patents, basic product design, for example, jobs listed in five inventor, in pattern for both original and last style IMAX, as well as PowerBook G4 Titanium, as opposed to utility pattern inventions. He has 43 issued US patents on inventions. The patent on the Mac OS 10 dock user interface with magnification feature was issued the day before he died. Although Jobs had a little involvement in the engineering and technical side of the original laptop computers, 
Crafts later used CEO position to dive the inviting himself in product design. Involved in many projects throughout his career, long lifetime marketing executive and corporate John Hawker, known as Fear of Royce at Apple and Nest, who could successfully stand up for jobs while also engaging with him. When terminally ill in hospital, Jobs cached new devices that would hold the iPad in hospital bed and also despite an oxygen monitor on his finger and oxygen suggested ways to reverse design of Simple City. Since death, the former Apple CEO was won 141 patents more than most inventors in enduring their lifetimes. Currently, Jobs holds over 455 patents. And we when look at VC uh, innovations and legacy Apple 1, Apple 2, Apple Lisa, Macintosh, Nest Computer, iMac, iTunes, iPod, iPhone, iPad. And when you talk about his honors in 1985, National Board of Technology with Steve Wozniak, awarded by US President Ronald Reagan in 1987, Jeffrey Award for Public Service, 1989, Entrepreneur of the Decade by Inc. Magazine. 1991 Honward Volume Award from Reed College in 2007, named the most powerful person in business by Fortune Magazine. 2007, inducted into the California Hall of Fame, located at California Museum of History, Women and the Arts. In 2012, Germany Trust Awards and an award for who influenced the music industry in areas unrelated to performance. In 2013, personally inducted a district legend. In 2017, Steve Jobs, the theater opens at Apple Park. And more than this, there are a lot of punch other than this. But there is no time for us to say that, so I am ending. And when we talk more about Steve Jobs' life, his life was a role model, a real role model for youngsters and teens who are interested in the field of science and technology and the web designing and this uh, architecture automobile not automobile sorry mobile design and his new investors marketing field what we can learn from his life is that he had a great determination in him whatever he feared whether finally he was pushed out of apple he never lose his hope he started with nest and this after years decades reflected that and he again joined in apple his hard work his nest computers all get a really big rubber of course and so sad of his death, and we could pray of us, nothing else. And we could say, and he had a great, was a great man of heart, it was a really good heart. He had a friendship, love to his family, his fellow friend, Bos, Bosniak, we could say, Bosniak was a really, very real good to, for a friend to Mr. Jobs, and his love towards Tim Cook, all are really good. And I think it's time to stop and time.